that the, 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 the series is entitled Back to the Bible. What is it entitled? I cannot hear you. What is the series entitled? Back to the Bible. Turn to your neighbor and say, let's get back to the Bible. More than any other time in earth's history, it is time for God's people and it's time for Jamaica nation to return to the principles of the Almighty God. And the best way to know his way and to understand his will is through a thorough, consistent understanding of the word of God. So every night, we're not giving you everything one night. Every night we come out here, we'll be giving you another piece of the puzzle in eternity's truth. So we want you to come and to join us every single evening out here, 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock underneath the tent as we explain Bible truth, as we lift up Jesus Christ, and we are, as we announce the coming king who is at the door. What do you say? Yo, many of you out here are looking for meaning and purpose and understanding to all the chaos that is happening in life. And we are here to let you know the Bible provides the answers. What do you say? So every night I will be preaching the word of the living God. I thought somebody would say amen. Every night we will be preaching the word of the living God. Whether it is from the physical printed Bible or from the screen. We will be lifting up thus saith the Lord in 2019. The word of God will be heard. So we want you to join us out here every single evening as we look at the word of God, as we focus on the truths of the last days, as we look on the, the great hallmarks that tell us that the coming king is at the door. Tomorrow night, the topic is an ancient book for modern times. An ancient book for what? Modern times. Join us tomorrow night. An ancient book for modern times. On Wednesday, our topic is going to be how Stella got her groove back. Wednesday night, you can't afford to miss Wednesday night. Many of you lose your groove long time. Well, Wednesday night, we're going to show you how to get back in motion. Show me your motion. Thursday night. It's going to be the last night of the first week. And Thursday night, our topic is dangerous possibilities. What is it, Thursday night? Dangerous possibilities. That sermon is particularly aimed towards our men because we believe that we must reach the men where the men are. What do you say? So Thursday night, dangerous possibilities. Friday night, we'll be resting. Let the church say amen. And we are back out here on Saturday morning. When did I say? We are back out here on Saturday morning at 9.15. My, my friends in the audience, come and join us. But at 11 o'clock, the sermon is going to be how God says, Honey, I love you. So Saturday, you can't miss that. Uh, all the lovers, we know Tuesday night is the lovers night, but uh, this one is for Saturday. How, how God says, Honey, I love you. But tonight is the night, and tonight we're going to be answering the question, what's love got to do with it? What's love got to do with it? I'm going to invite you to stand with me, take your Bibles in your hand, and turn to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 3. When you would have found it, stick your index finger in there. We're going to do our pledge every night. When I give you the text, you're going to find it. Stick your index finger in there. And we're going to do our pledge every night. Genesis chapter 3 is where we are at tonight. Going back to the Bible, the first book of the Bible. Chapter 3, when you're found it, stick your index finger in there and raise your Bible in the ear. You will say after me if the Bible says it. No, 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 you're not there yet, you're not there yet. Let's go, everybody, on your feet, on your feet, on your feet. Uh, Genesis chapter 3, you have found it, just stick your index finger right in there and raise the Bible in the ear. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible, and the Bible only, that is key out here. Let's go, if the Bible says it. No, man, you need to have a little more power than that. Now, let's go again. If the Bible says it, I believe it, I will accept it, and that's settles it. Oh, somebody not in the preacher. Let's go again. Let's go again. My Bible in the air, swords in hand. If the Bible says it, I believe it. 
I accept it and that settles it tonight. His voice makes the difference. When he speaks, he relieves my troubled mind. It's the only voice I hear that makes the difference. And that will follow one day at a time. Captured the 
the, 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 the song and uh, you know when you talk about uh, these songbirds you're talking about Tina Turner Whitney Houston and uh, Celine Dion all individuals who had early Christian uh, foundations but wandered away from uh, the gospel truth and entered into the secular world but Tina Turner captured the, the, the song released in 1984 the song is what's love got to do with it in this song Tina Turner turned things around for with a relationship that was once had with one of her lovers are you hearing me tonight there is not only a song about what's love got to do with it there is a movie also which brings out that that came out in 2004 this song put Tina Turner it was a single in it and it put her on a very uh, high ranking in the gospel music industry. It asks a poignant question. It asks uh, an important question. It asks a question that we must consider tonight. What's love got to do with it? This song was inducted in the Grammy Hall of of fame in 2012 giving Tina Turner her third Grammy Hall of Fame award and her 11th Grammy award. This was no ordinary song and if I were to start singing it today, some of you in the audience would continue singing because you know the words of the song. You understand what the song means. The song brings out a concept which we must place at the forefront of tonight's discussion. In in this great salvation plan, in this great redemption story, what's love got to do with it? Well, many individuals would like to paint God as a God who is loveless. Many individuals want to paint God as a God who is destructive, as a God who is not concerned about our welfare. I would like to suggest to us out here tonight, on this first night of the Back to the Bible Gospel Feast, that the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is God's love story. I would like to suggest to us tonight uh, that from Genesis 1 to Revelation chapter 22, every single page, every single verse, every single line uh, is lit with the story that God loves you. Amen. Amen. I would like to put it to you tonight that the test of one's love is not when one is perfect. The test of one's love is not when one does everything right. The test of one's love is not when you are doing everything to the liking and preference of another. I would like to show you an amazing story tonight. In Genesis chapter 1, we are told, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The Bible does not leave it to any chance for us to determine that there is a God. The Bible does not leave it to any chance for us to determine that this world didn't come in by any big bang theory. The Bible starts with a big bang. The Bible says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. I would like to suggest to you tonight there is a God and there is a God who has created the heaven and the earth. I would like to suggest to you tonight that in sync with Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2 that God so loved the world that he made it a perfect place. Amen. When he finished his creation on each day. The Bible has it uh, that he looked on it uh, in verse uh, in, in verse 12 uh, and he says it was good. He looked on it in verse 18 and he said it was good. He looked on it again uh, in verse 25 and he says it is good. He looked on it at the end of the six days and the Lord says it is good. I'm stop here to let somebody know you are not no product of any monkey. You're not any product of any evolution. You're made in the image of an almighty God. It is God that made you. He made you 
black and he made you handsome. He made you black and he made you pretty. He made you with your nice voice and he made you with your nice ears. You are a product of an almighty God. No monkey never met you. No big bang theory didn't create you. It is God that made you. One of the major things that people want us to believe today is that we come from monkey. The question I have to ask those who say that if we come from monkey, how I still see monkey making monkey? How I don't see any baby child, human child coming out of a monkey? It is a lie from the pit of hell. We're not accepting lies. We're accepting truth in Jesus. We are made in the image of God. Can I talk to somebody tonight? If a man can make you realize that you are made in monkey, he is robbing you of something pretty. When I wake up, come on somebody, my eyes move. When I wake up, my feet move. When I wake up in the morning, the sun rises. When I go to bed in the evening, the sun sets. Every day is the same thing. Where is the big bang? One of the ways the devil wants to deceive us and fool us is to make us believe that we are not made in the image of an almighty God. I am an apologetic word. And I am an apologetic on this word from the living God. We are not no products of any monkey or evolution or big bang. We are children of the most high. He created the heavens and he created the earth. And brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. When God creates something, it's well done. Come on, somebody. I said, when God creates something, it's well done. So that is why we out here want you to help God to create a brand new you. Brand new world needs a brand new people. Brand new people needs a brand new life. Brand new life needs a brand new spirit. But to get all of that, you have to come to Jesus Christ. Well, in, I told you that the test of love is not when everything is perfect. So there was one who was a cherubim in heaven. He was clothed with beauty and he was given all kind of musical voices and he, he could sing any note. He was a great cherubim in heaven. And when he saw the beautiful place that God created, he became jealous. Can I talk to somebody? Some people know I see you have nothing good. Hello, somebody. As long as they see you being blessed, they try to tear you down. But can I talk to you today? If you are a child of God, you don't need to worry about that. If you are if you're covered under the blood of Jesus Christ, you need not worry about that. It pays to serve Jesus. It pays to give your life to Jesus. It pays to turn it over to Jesus. Brothers and sisters, the devil didn't like it. And so at the end of the creation in Genesis chapter 3, I am not going to focus much on this tonight, but come with to Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 the Bible says now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made and he said unto the woman yea has God said you shall not eat of any tree or every tree of the tree of garden and the woman said unto the serpent we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God has said you shall not eat of it neither shall you touch it lest you die and the serpent said unto to the woman, you shall not surely die, for God knows that in the day that you eat of the earth, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods, knowing both good and evil. Verse 6 says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat it and gave also unto her husband, and he did eat verse 7, and the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God amongst the trees 
up to God. And can I talk to somebody today? I will pause at verse 9. And the Lord God said unto Adam, and said unto him, Adam, where are you? Is somebody with the preacher tonight? I want to let you know that you have a lot of voices in the world today discounting the word of the living God. A lot of people who want to pluck out of the Bible what they want to believe and what they want to throw away. I am here as an apologetic servant of the living God. We must stand by the word of God and by the word of God only. The first temptation that was successfully met on planet earth was to challenge the word of God. When the devil came, he challenged the authority of God's word. He came to Eve and he asked Eve, has God said Let me remind you. Satan know the Bible. Satan knows the Bible. He challenged the word of God. God had given Adam and Eve a clear instruction. You have mango tree, say amen. Nyam the mango. Let's see me I put on my weight. I me think me know where I go on pastor. They might give me too much East Indian man. Some days me get like a jewelry, but me getting so East Indian man. But come on, somebody. The Lord say you want to eat mango tree. You want to eat from the mango tree. Eat from the mango tree. The Lord say if you want to eat from the guinea tree, eat from the guinea tree. The Lord say if you want to eat from the from the from the from the. From the Star up a tree, eat from the star up a tree. Brothers and sisters, don't let anybody fool you. Anything that God says will be challenged. Satan will never allow God's word to go unchallenged. He will always challenge it. When God says one thing, he'll always make up something else. That's why we must come out here every night to hear the undiluted, unpolluted word of the living God. We're going to cut it. We're going to trim it. We're going to chop it. We're going to preach it. We're going to announce it. People must hear the word of God. In 2019, we must get back to the Bible. Back to what God says. Otherwise, every single last one of us are Eve's and Adam's. Oh, if we come out here at nine o'clock, let me speed on. So he got Eve to doubt the word of God. And after he got Eve to doubt the word of God, he got Eve to disobey the word of God. So the challenge on God's authority, because God is not here for himself, he's not here physically, because he's not here to defend himself, he's not here, what they do is take his word and pollute it. But can I say something to the, to the church tonight? If you're serious about heaven, you must know the scriptures for yourself. If you're serious about your salvation, you can't depend on no pastor, or evangelist, or bishop, or brother, or tradition, or history, or family life to make a decision on the word of God. You must know the word of God for yourself. Are you hearing me, somebody? I said, please, unless we do this, we too will fail like Adam and Eve. But I told you, that the test is not when you're perfect. The test is not when you do everything right. The test is not when you have everything down pack. Because brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. If salvation were for the perfect, I would not be here. Come on, somebody. I said, if salvation were for those who have never sinned, I would not be here. I said, if salvation were for those who never fall, you would not be here. But I thank God that salvation takes into account sinners like you, sinners like me, sinners like all of us. Yea, though we are sinners, Jesus Christ has opened up a way, created a door, and give us an opportunity to make our calling an election sure. I don't need to be perfect. I don't need to 
will get it all right. I don't need to have it all done, but what I need is to surrender my life to Jesus Christ. Every day, God used to come. Give me a cheer day. God used to come. And that's after he made the world. And he used to sit down with Adam and Eve and talk. Then the time that they never did no gigabytes of memory. Come on, somebody. They never need no storage. They never need no tablet. They never need no recording device. So I said, brothers and sisters, God just sit down and, and tell them 50,000 things and they just don't load it and then pray. Because God did have us still perfect and it's fresh. Come on, somebody. Hello, somebody. But brothers and sisters, when man and Adam, Adam and Eve sinned, God was no longer able to sit down and talk with them directly. So on the day when they sin or thereafter, the Bible lets us know, watch this brothers and sisters, back up, back up, back up. Wait, 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 wait. let me get this right. When Eve sinned, the Bible says the eyes of both of them were opened. So Satan did right, not you? Satan did right, say. God, you want you to be like one of us, knowing everything. So when Eve ate from the tree, instantaneously was transferred to her the feelings and the sinful nature of man. She became to know what it is means to be in rebellion against God. And the Bible says not only were their eyes opened, the Bible says they both knew that they were naked. Hallelujah. Somebody, somebody not getting the message tonight. I said they both knew that they were naked. Brothers and sisters, the fact that the Bible says that uh, mean that in the dispensation before sin, uh, that though they were naked, uh, they were covered by the glory of Almighty God. You see, brethren, when you are a child of the living God, when you serve God, He will put things over you that you don't even know. Blessings will be over you that you can't even see. Blessings will be on your life that you can't even understand for the Lord knows the ways of the righteous he will walk with them he will talk with them he will live with them when you live the life of Christ it matters but the moment they eat Eyes were open, but that means that mean now they got to know what sin was. And only that they were naked. So as so we start, we are close. And now when we are bust up in a, in a heat, we have to wear a jacket and tie if you look like parson. What a song. Mm. What a something. And not only that, the Bible says they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Not only no one said we naked. I said not only no one said we naked. You sin ashore, you dirt ashore, your unrighteousness ashore, your transgression ashore. Somebody today, we are all naked sinners. Amen. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. You lose it. Don't bring back my chair. I'm never telling you to go nowhere in my chair. You're out of But can I talk to somebody tonight? Can I give somebody some hope tonight? Can I talk to somebody tonight? Brothers and sisters, all when we feel God, God now feel me. Hi! I say all when we feel God, God now feel me. When we unfaithful, God will be faithful. God now make your unfaithfulness do away with his faithfulness. You may be a sinner, but God will always be God. He will always be redeemer. He will always be savior. Yeah. 
So same time. When he used to come every other day. In come this a day. So God I come. Now every other day before they sing. When they hear God they run to God. But this day. When they heard God was coming. They ran from God. And my phone I run from God for a long time. God have mercy. Amen. But God sent me down here. Yeah. Sorry. I said God sent us down here. Yeah. Hello somebody. Yeah. I said God sent us down here. To pitch a tent. Blow the trumpet. Call sinners to repentance. We know they have to give you no prosperity gospel. We they have to tell you you're born in sin, shape and iniquity. You're going to die in it if you don't come to Jesus Christ with it. So come and give Jesus your life now. That is the message we are preach out here. That is the message of redemption. Blessing no they in our only money. Blessing no they all we in your clothes. Blessing they in your spiritual connection. So this is the day when they hear God. God come and they see in place God they sit down. He sit down. Because God is not going to make your unfaithfulness change his faithfulness. God is not going to be your sin, make your sinful nature change his righteous nature. So although him, oh hallelujah, I wish I had time tonight. I said, God came, and when they heard God walking in the cool of God, Adam and Eve run the hide behind bush. Adam, where are you? Adam. So Eve, hear Eve. Answer him, answer him. You answer him, you answer him. Are you going to have the food first, man? You answer him. Are you a demon? You answer him. Are you a head of us? And they wrong me at fight. But can I talk to somebody today? When God asks a question, he not asked because he don't know the answer. God was not asking Adam where he was because he didn't know his exact location. God didn't need any GPS. He didn't need any Google Maps. He didn't need no map. God knew where they were. But when God is coming for you, he will give you an opportunity to run come to him. He will give you an opportunity to respond. Want to him. He will give you an opportunity to turn around your life for him. He comes and he says, Adam, where are thou? Adam, where are thou? Tonight I ask you the question, where are you in your spiritual life? Where are you? I was sinking deep in sin, far from the crimson shore, sinking deep, so very deep, sinking to rise no more. Then I heard Somebody not hearing me. The master cry and from the water lifted me. Now safe and I, the earth lifted me. Hey. Hey. Where are now? So when they get the real, when they get the little strength to respond. I don't say, I was afraid, Lord. Because I was naked and I hid myself. Can I wrap up the message tonight? <laughs> Let me tell you something. God had options. The moment Adam and Eve sinned, he had an option. He could have killed them. He could have rise up new. He had options. He didn't have to do what he did next. He didn't have to respond the way he responded next. But because there is love in his heart. Hallelujah, somebody not with the preacher tonight. I said because there is love in his heart. 
when he made man he was not making man just for making man's sake to show off his power and his authority when he was making man he made man with the freedom of choice I hear some people talking if God did so big and bad why did he allow sin to come in let me tell you why God allowed it God allowed it because God no one no robot to serve him God no one no artificial praise God want people who have been through the battle God want people who have been through the war here and have decided in their mind made up in their mind come what me I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back no devils may come no turning back you have to have a made up mind you have to have the choice Everybody want to blame God. And if you never give the choice now, you blame him and say, what a man wicked. He just make we have galanza, galanza. I do whatever he want with you do. Have we like puppy pants string at us? You, 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 you. So when I don't know Eve, got the conversation going. Adam blamed Eve. Eve blamed the serpent. And if the serpent had courage to talk back to God, the serpent would have blamed God. Well, you know what God did? Mm. I love it. Verse 15. When he got to the serpent, he said, and I will put enmity. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, come on. I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Somebody not hearing me. Between your seed and between her seed. Come on, somebody. I hear some people ask the question if you're a Christian, why do I go through some of sin? Because it will bruise your heel. Because somebody, come on, come on. But at the end, you will bruise its head. You see, brethren? Come on, somebody, stay with me. God is not looking about your momentary satisfaction, God is looking about your eternal salvation. You're not getting me. I said, God is not looking about your momentary satisfaction. He's looking about your eternal salvation. So God could have reversed everything right there. But God said, no, because man chose to die. Because man chose to sin. He must now go through the consequences of his sin. But I am going to put in place a measure to protect him. That even when the devil touch him, heal. Someone will get little touch from the devil. Thank the Lord. Because he never touched your heart. He just touched your heel. Someone will leave the praise the Lord. Because the devil touched your finger. He never touched your brain. I said the Lord will protect you. He will allow the devil to come this far and no further. He will build an edge around you. I will put enmity. It shall bruise. Thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. And he went down and he went down. But that's not what I want to bring you to. I want you to come to me. I want you to look with me at verse 22. At, no, no, verse 21. Come on, somebody. Uh, the Bible says, And unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skin, and he clothed them. Somebody should say, Amen. Let me tell you something. Fig leaf clothing can't work again. Fig leaf clothing cannot work. Even when you are a sinner, you need Jesus Christ to make you your garment. You need Jesus Christ himself to sew the pieces together. Adam and Eve were naked. But what Adam and Eve lacked, God provided for. What Adam and Eve sinned and got, God used his righteousness to come. 
cover over. That's why I'm not worried about being a sinner. Because sufficient provision has been made. That man, though he is a sinner, may be saved. That's why I'm here to tell you. Romans chapter 5 tells us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ gave himself for us while we were yet in our iniquities. He didn't wait for you to get perfect. He didn't wait for you to get holy. Oh, that God did was whatever they lacked after they sinned, he provided. Tonight, Omar said the elephant is a sinner. I'm a sinner. But I read John 3.16. 